Hey folks, it's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Today I want to talk to you about the importance of scouting public land in Ohio in March that I think really leads to more success when the hunting season comes around this upcoming fall. Yeah, yeah I'm hoping this scouting today pays off for uh, next fall, so we'll see. Oh, oh yeah, it will, man, for sure. Okay, brother. Bye, man. You have a good day. I'll send you some pictures if I find anything interesting today. All right, please do. It's the last Friday in March after work, and I'm heading out to Ohio this weekend to scout some public land. My hope is that the information I gather this weekend is going to help Lake and I find a bit more success when we come back here in November to archery hunt. I want to go through a couple of reasons why I feel it's important to do this in March. Uh, lack of leaf cover is one. A second one is fall sign. A third one is getting into sensitive areas and then finally uh, finding some sheds. Obviously, without leaves on the trees, it's a lot easier to see through the woods. Uh, visually, you can just cover more ground. This is especially important when you may have limited time, and especially like me this weekend, going to public land where I may not be on this property again until I come back to hunt in the fall. You can see thick areas and bedding areas at greater distances. You can make out rubs further away and you can find the transition and edge between different habitat types just a lot easier at this time of the year without leaf cover. The second reason is because of the fall sign. As soon as the snow melts in February and March, it uncovers that, uh, that sign that was laid down in the fall. Uh, trails and especially some of the scrapes that you can find. And this is important because you wanna make sure that the areas you're marking on your map where you think deer are gonna be are areas where deer are gonna be when you're there hunting in the fall. Not places they'd be feeding in the summer and not places that they would be in their winter deer yards in the winter. The third reason is because I feel like this time of the year, it's not quite as invasive to step into some of these areas that you wouldn't step into in the fall. You can investigate some of these doe bedding areas a little bit heavier. You can also investigate some of these areas where there's an accumulation of rubs and you know that there's uh, predominantly buck bedding in these areas. And if I'm doing it in March, I just don't feel like I'm kicking them out of these areas like I would do if I'm traipsing around these areas in the fall. And then finally, you can always find some, sh some sheds in March. Obviously, the further you wait into March, you're competing with other people on public land to find these sheds. Sometimes you're out there purposely looking for these sheds to be able to see if a deer made it through the year. And sometimes you're just looking to find a trophy to make all your time with boots on the ground worth it as you're getting ready to find information for next hunting season. I'm uh, down in Ohio the end of March, uh, spending two days scouting at a place that uh, Blake hunted last year. Uh, we've been doing Ohio for two years now. You know, the first year we did a lot of uh, open woods and forest and we didn't see a lot of deer, but I saw an absolute monster, 170 inch plus, and it hooked me, man. I was back to Ohio the second year and the second year we did some ag. We saw a lot more deer, but we also saw a ton more hunters. So, you know, we kind of did some experimenting in January, came back out here during an archery season and froze, but did some more scouting. And then uh, last year I didn't go and Blake had come out and done a little bit more scouting after our second year. And uh, he came out to a place last year that he hadn't hunted before, but he had been near this place and ended up scoring on a nice eight point last year. I was disappointed that I was not able to share it with him, but so pumped for him that he was able to get a buck in Ohio. So here I am at the place they hunted last year, and uh, I'm gonna do some scouting for two full days and try to get as much intel as I can so that when Blake and I and a couple of the buddies come back in the fall, we've got some ideas, some places to start and look for some fresh sign. 28 degrees, turkey's going nuts. <laughs> Good start to the morning, a couple hundred yards into the woods and three doe feeding on a trail in front of me. I use Onyx as my online scouting tool when I'm out there, I'm marking things like trails, uh, creek crossings, scrapes, rubs, bedding areas, ag that's close by, oak flats. And for me personally, I use purple for deer behavior. 
whether it's going to be a rub symbol or scrape symbol in purple, or whether it's a dash line on a map that's representing deer trails. For me personally, I tend to focus on scrapes that I find in the woods or hopefully finding some community scrapes. I find that finding scrapes near the edge of fields, oftentimes those deer aren't getting to those scrapes until after dark, and thus it's really not helpful to be marking those on your map as much. For rubs, I don't mark individual rubs, but uh, I mark these hubs, these areas where you find not only current rubs, but also historic rubs, especially ones of significant size of two, three, four, even five inches diameter trees and rubs that are a little bit higher up the tree. I also try to mark the best I can deer funnels, whether it's trails that are along the edge of thick stuff, uh, trails that parallel swamps, uh, or even trails that cross creeks or go along the edge of a steep base. Anytime you can find some of these funnels, it's just going to increase the odds of the number of deer that you see pass in front of you or when you're out there hunting in the fall. The other thing that I really pay attention to when I'm in the woods is human sign. If I find spent shells, if I find garbage, if I find stands on public land, which even though they're not supposed to be out there, they're always there, it gives me an idea that these areas that I may want to stay away from. Number one, I don't want to hunt around other people and ruin my experience. And number two, I don't think big buck are found in these areas. You got to find those little pockets where deer feel comfortable and safe because there's not as much pressure, whether these areas are a mile out in the woods or whether these areas are 200 yards from a road because you got to cross a creek or go through thick stuff and people are too lazy to do that. So as you guys watch this video, think about some of these things I talked about and hopefully this is going to help you guys better interpret the woods when you're out scouting this spring and getting ready for successful hunts next fall. Came out of those hardwoods up here. There's this real grassy area. A couple of places to sit around it, a little bit wide open, but definitely with all this hardwood leaf litter on the floor, it's a great place for them to come by and get some green feeding in the morning or as they get out of bed in the afternoon. You can see this real heavily used trail that comes across right here. There's a scrape right under one of the trees over there. I found a spot to sit up on the north side of this green area in a south or southwest or west wind. And to add to the bonus, there's this huge red oak right here, mature red oak. And it goes into this real thick, dark, deep pine forest. So I can see him coming out of this thick stuff and coming out onto this trail, past this oak, up into this green. We'll see, could be a spot for the fall. End of March, still got a frost hanging on. Pretty chilly this morning. No frost in the woods though. There's a skeleton right there. No meat left, man. And it's cleaned off. If there's a head around anywhere, not if it was a buck, somebody probably took the head. Could have been coyotes too. Probably was. They got a leg there. All sorts of fur here. Yeah, it looks like coyotes got that deer for sure. Walking up this trail in these pines, I find this huge scrape right here. Got some broken branches on it. Definitely been used pretty good in the fall, right there. And then uh, there's a fresh hoof print in it right there. There's another big scrape right there. Just where I marked that tree stand where that crossing is. And that other scrape by that beach, so that tree may be real good right at that crossing there. Whew. Getting a little warm. Try. Time to take some layers off.
That's a pretty little trout stream right here. Almost didn't see it because of the sun, but that's what I'm looking for right there. Nice, big, mature rubs. This little hemlock and oak slope that I just came down over has got tons of decent rubs just like this one right here. Got tons of trails across here, but man, it's tough to get over here. I'm telling you, I'm gonna have to play around with this and see if there's an easier way to get here. Great example of a buck bed right down there. Right across all these trails along this steep face right here. <laughs> Look at all the hair in that bed. I think that bed's used a lot. There's a big one. Holy moly. All over the place in here. Got a big one right there. New ones and old ones. I'm gonna actually find a location where I'm thinking about possibly uh, marking a tree stand. Uh, I'll go ahead and kind of take a look around me at the trails and the sign terrain uh, try to see if i can find any decent trees that are not only large enough but maybe have some cover behind them and then i get on x out and i go ahead and uh, mark it down on my phone including uh, how many sticks high i want to climb uh, the direction that i want my stand to face and the best wind direction that i can possibly have to hunt that stand location i think i found the perfect spot got this steep face right here and funnels the deer up along here and there's at least 50 rubs in and around this area and I got a tree that's over there that'll shoot both down and it'll shoot a trail above just below where I found those spots I'll possibly put a tree stand I had a nice buck bed right here man just poop in it hairs in it yeah got a view looking down over that steep face right there I'm hoping not to go in and cross this log challenging getting off it but I made it across <sighs> almost tripped <laughs> that would have been funny on camera oh is that a white oak right there wow that's an old white oak look at that thing that's cool Well, I decided to change it up a little bit. There's this real thick stuff, this opening, just real garbage hardwoods, nothing real tall, a lot of it dead. Um, tons of green briar in here, tons of honeysuckle, just bedding everywhere, tons of browse. I came along this area that's got a bunch of green with this little creek coming down through it. There's this nice heavy trail that goes right past it and down into the woods over there. So change of pace, if I get one of those days where it's just not working in the woods, I can come and pop in this cherry and see if I can catch anything coming by and thick stuff. Great day to be in the woods, man. Seeing tons of deer sign. All good stuff for next fall and enjoying the day being outside in the sun.
I just came up over the side of this little steep face where I was eating lunch. And as I did, I came up over, there was a lady on a horse, scared the crap out of her. She thought it was a bear that was coming up over top of the rise. Her horse just stopped dead. And she was like, oh boy. So she was happy to see it was me come over the hedge, not, not a bear. <laughs> I was up top in all the hardwoods and decided I was gonna walk across the hill until I found a trail coming up. And I found a trail, a couple scrapes on, came right through these hemlocks and there it goes right down over the edge and across to the creek and there's a hollow that goes up over there that ends up heading up to some fields so i'm gonna try and see if i can find out where these deer are crossing here hopefully i don't act like a toboggan and fly down on my butt Safe. On the downhill slide, I only got about 200 yards back to my truck, and then uh, I'm gonna do another one, but not eight and a half miles like what I've done this morning and this afternoon, just like mile and a half so I gotta decide which one I'm gonna do Whew. good day tiring day 8.3 miles found five or six super solid spots uh, have them marked on my map wind directions now I got to figure out the best way to get in there but really excited got a starting point for coming in when we come in in the fall and uh, from there we can bounce around to fresh sign but I'm gonna take a break here for a couple minutes and uh, I'm gonna hit one more short one uh, before I head back and uh, get showered cleaned up and uh, go grab some food Really <laughs> Starting the second hike much shorter than the first one 1 1.3 miles Just a little bit of elevation difference, but I got a place that I want to check out out here that I think could be a real good pinch point and uh, if so, it'd be an alternate place to come hunt. But I feel like that other place just isn't good or there's too much pressure in the fall. Holy loud. They don't like me walking by quite right down. Pretty cool. I found this red oak flat with a little swamp right behind it here. Funnels the deer along the edge of this. Any west wind's gonna work in here. And uh, this isn't any more than a quarter acre with mature red oaks. So I think this can be a great place to come in and sit if somebody else isn't already sitting here. And there's thick stuff everywhere around it. Water to drink, I think it's a solid spot maple tree right there. I'm going to sit behind, sit on the back side of it, and uh, should give me some fairly open shooting lanes. Can't trim on public, but should be able to get around some of these branches. That last spot that I was so excited about, I looked at the map wrong. It's 100 yards on to private. Not going to be hunting there. Okay, time to head back to the truck. I got to check one more spot for uh, parking in the morning and then head out of here. What's up folks? Second day in Ohio doing some scouting here at the end of March. I uh, just got to watch a beautiful sunrise. So I'm about two minutes away from where I'm gonna go ahead and uh, scout today. I've got two smaller pieces to scout today, uh, one about five miles and one about three. So we'll see after the five mile how my body's feeling because after 10 and a half miles yesterday, I am sore. Okay, we'll see you out in the field. So a couple of things I'm looking for out here in Ohio. 
um, habitat change is one. And where I just came in, there was a whole area of mature red and white oaks, and it was bordered on two sides by pines. Um, definitely I saw that there was tracks going through there. There was no set trail, uh, but I'd actually probably have to get in there for a day and really have an observation sit to figure out exactly where deer were going to be able to archery hunt. It was just too big of an area just to pick a tree and plop in. A couple of the other areas I'm looking for are these areas in these little hollows where you see all this green up there. And then occasionally you'll come across one of these trails. And as I find some of these heavy trails coming through here, I start to pop on trails and then eventually uh, hopefully find some more food sources, find some scrapes, find some rubs, find some areas where deer come out of thick stuff to feed and uh, possibly get water. So just part of what I'm looking for while I'm here in Ohio. So I'm going to hop on this trail and see where it goes. Evidence of humans right here for sure, which isn't always what I want. Again, evidence of humans right there. But sometimes you can find these little pockets in these areas where people hunt that you can get away where deer are forced to and people don't want to go into because it's too thick or it's across a creek. So I'll just keep an eye out and keep working my way through here. So just about 100 yards up above me there, found a spot where you could see all the way across this little draw and up onto the other side and uh, it was a spot there where somebody must have sat during probably gun season because it was an area around half of a tree that was all cleared out and it was definitely old so I would imagine it being March now that was definitely a gun spot someone sitting there I've already found some shells um, and then I'm following this trail and I find a couple of historic rubs right here I have found no fresh rubs and no scrapes. Uh, the other thing that makes me think maybe this isn't the property I should be checking, or at least this part this part of the property, is that there's like eight or nine like single acre houses that border one half of this property. Even if two or three of those guys are archery hunting, they've already scoured these entire woods and they know what's best to hunt rather than me coming in here for one day. So I don't know. I'm gonna do a little bit of exploratory search in here, but I may be off this property pretty quick and bounce into another one. There it is. Top to a coffee can get lit through that way. Well, I got to the part of the property that I thought had the most promise, and there was just way too much human sign. Saw so zero scrapes in a mile of walking. Uh, no fresh rubs, everything was historic. Just have a strange feeling that because there's like 10 properties, one acre properties that to this piece of public there's a lot of pressure so I'm gonna cut my losses and uh, head back to the truck and uh, hit a secondary spot that I want to see before I go and hit that last one of the day that's what happens in scouting you know but I say about 50% of the time you find something useful useful and about 50% of the time you don't find anything at all it's just part of the game I enjoy being out here though okay I'm at a second spot I'm gonna try here this morning uh, got some cornfields that are close on private and uh, I've got a steep face that uh, goes down a little bit of a hollow across a creek up a hollow and onto cornfields on the opposite side as well so I'm going to come in here I'm just really looking at one place follow these two hollows down in and uh, see if I can find any trails where they might bed during the day and then come up in the evening to feed in the cornfields. Got all this understory growth here. Must have been a selective cut at some time in the past. Then all this thick stuff you have on the opposite side, it goes down over the steep edge into that creek ravine. Some great big mature red oaks in here. There's white oaks in here. These are perfect places here for a buck to bed just over the edge. And all they gotta do is pop up 25 yards and they're eating acorns up top here. And if something comes after them, they pop right down back over this edge as an escape corridor. Walking across this edge right here, I just said it'd be a great place for the deer to pop over the edge. And uh, there's a tree stand right there on public land. 
out of season, totally illegal, but it happens all the time. It's actually the first tree stand I've seen all weekend. Great little spot he's got too. There's the issue sometimes with public, is you run out of room to follow the terrain. I'm about to get up to posted property up here, and I still have not hit a point where the elevation change from this side of the creek to that side of the creek is shallow enough for them to go ahead and get across. So, shit, it may be a challenge for me to get across with as steep as that is. This is what I mean. I hit this boundary of public and private, and I kind of hit this jam. Whew. I gotta scramble up that, find a way somehow. Beautiful. Hopefully I don't slide down. I don't want to go sledding today. I know you guys are all waiting for me to fall so you can laugh. Hopefully I'm going to prove you wrong and not go down. Buddy, it's slippery. Oh, perfect. There's the barbed wire. I'm still on public. Didn't trespass. Whew, I made it. Now to head back to the cornfields for the original region, reason I came in here. Stands on public land, man. This time of the year, I know in New York State it's illegal. I figure it is out of season in Ohio too, but some people just don't follow rules. Well, I finally found some decent sign. I found two scrapes, nice big rub. Found a huge red oak tree to go ahead and put the tree stand in. Uh, hunting any south wind, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep walking up along these property lines and see if I can find anything that's either connected to this or something different. At least one location for four hours of walking this morning, but sometimes it, that's the way it works with scouting. Holy crap, look at that thing. And that is fresh from this year. With a scrape right underneath it. Okay, third and final stop today. Uh, gonna go ahead and finish up this piece of property that Blake and I both looked at and we thought some had potential. Kind of a steep drop off the edge down to a creek. Gotta get across the creek and then uh, hunt the opposite side. Hint to you guys, if you're thinking about crossing a creek, make sure that a couple times during the year you cross it or try to cross it at different water levels. And if you go to USGS, United States Geological Survey, to water flow data, you can check the water food flow data on the day that you crossed uh, and make sure that when it gets to hunting season, before you even go hunt, you just get online and you check USGS data for that day and you make sure that it's under the gauge height and the discharge volume that you decided was uh, low enough and slow enough that you could safely get across the water. I just did that after crossing this, and no doubt about it, if it was much higher, probably would not be able to cross. So I put that in my notes on my phone, so that when I come back next time, I know whether or not I can cross this creek even before I get out of the truck. I think that is a pretty big track right there, man. That is awesome. I'll take that any day. Tons of potential for this property. I'm finding a lot of scrapes, like huge scrapes underneath beech trees and trails leading up to a cornfield. Problem is, even though there's red oaks, the any red oak tree that gives you a shot at any of those scrapes of the trail coming up is totally blocked by a dense underbrush. So I'm struggling finding a tree that's just right. So I found one that's a maybe, I marked it. I'm gonna keep moving on and uh, it'll be one of those things we come back there to hunt. We'll have to uh, play around with it when we get here. Here's an example of a great way find trails just walk up or down a creek and you find a crossing like this you know you're in a good spot I'm gonna show you guys an example of how a creek and change in habitat can create a funnel I've got all these softwoods all these evergreens over here I got this whole area of mature oak hardwoods and I've got this creek valley and if you take a look as I walk along this edge, there's turkey scratch everywhere in here. It comes up to the point where 
the edge of this steep creek case and these softwoods meet like a little point and I think this is a great example of how you can catch a funnel of deer that are moving past you in one area close enough to shoot with your bow. Here's what it looks like from the other side of these softwoods and then the open oak forest and then down over this steep face. I'm following these trails up here and this is the reason you do it. I got a little bit of a rub there. Yeah, a little bit of a rub there. Yeah, a little bit of a rub there. And then you come down and yeah, a little bit of a rub there. <laughs> yeah, man, that's what I'm freaking talking about. Ooh, look at that. It's about time. Freaking 16 miles, my legs are dead, and I finally found one. A little late. He chewed up a bit. I freaking found an Ohio shed. Hell yeah. I'm so pumped, man. I thought maybe I was going to find at least a couple sheds out here, and I haven't seen shit. And I finally found one. Literally, last mile and a half of all the miles I'm putting on this weekend. And practically stepped on the damn thing because I was looking at the beautiful view down over the creek but it's so cool walking through this pine forest I'm pretty much done I'm about spent after two days I'm working myself back to the point where I gotta climb down a kind of steep slope to get back to the creek to put my hip boots on across the creek to climb back up another hill get back to my truck change my clothes <sighs> tired need some food need something to drink big decisions on the way home man subway kfc hmm anyways great weekend here the end of march definitely enjoyed the scout that i did had two beautiful days of weather got a ton of great intel to come back and give blake so the two of us can sit down and evaluate what he learned hunting here last year what I learned scouting here and uh, be ready to come to Ohio this coming up fall and hopefully be on some buck. Okay guys, it's Kurt from Whitetails Deer Hunting. Hoping you guys have a great day. See ya. Yeah, not looking forward to this. Not with tired legs. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I knew that was gonna happen. Oh. Talk about a wedgie.